Hello everybody and welcome back to another War of the Visions video. Today we're going to be talking about this account that I've got my hands on. It is a relatively new player's account and I say relatively because we've got fan cred right here but what it is is account that has been neglected it's been forgotten because the players stopped playing the game for a bit and they want to get back into it but they just really don't know where to start so we're going to take a look at the account together which I think is going to make for a super cool video because you as the audience can then get in the comments and make your recommendations based on what you see here and the person whose account this is can then watch the video and make an informed decision. So whose account are we even looking at? Well, this is the account of Rev, who is my Discord manager uh, and my buddy uh, and he is gonna get back into the game but he asked me for some advice so I said hey let's make a video out of it and Rev is actually just starting out on YouTube as well and you can find him at Gateway of the Six that's his channel I'm gonna put a link to that in the description uh, of the video so that you can go check it out and give him some support and check out what he's doing uh, and then also quick shout out to join that discord and come chat with us about Ward the Visions or any any other gacha games that you're playing or games in general uh, we just all seem to chat in whatever channels there are so it's a super welcoming discord and I'd love to see you there okay so let's move on to the actual account what we're gonna do is uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna frame this like I'm it's someone that doesn't know uh, anything about the game although Rev does know uh, lots about the game uh, but I'm going to go through it so that this video would be very useful to someone that's just starting out that hasn't played the game much or hasn't played the game before so uh, with that said let's take a look at the account so right Right off the bat, if you are new or you're coming back, you want to make sure that you're logging in every single day. In Rev's case, he has that new login bonus. He's got the uh, August bonus. He's got the comeback bonus, uh, and he's also got the uh, the regular weekly bonus that we're getting right now. Plus all this other stuff that's in here that he hasn't claimed uh, and it's really really gonna add up and this is important because you can see he's actually already starting to get quite a stock up here and he's still got a bunch of days left before the the beginners bonus is over so it's not out of the question for Rev to save up another um, 20k Vizior in the next coming while and then be in a really good spot for a future banner. So the other thing you want to do is kind of, I just like to work my way down the left part of the screen and then my, all the way across. Uh, so just every day, get your, get your dailies done right away. Because when you do that, you're going to make sure that you don't miss anything. And I've missed hard quests before or like one arena match or something because I'm, I'm doing things out of order. Uh, and then you end up um, getting your milestones m messed up and it's not the end of the world but it's kind of frustrating uh, so right off the bat looking here we can actually unlock these uh, slots uh, which is something that you want to do uh, for sure so I'm gonna let Rev make that final decision but I recommend that you unlock uh, both of these slots because overall they're going to be very useful to leveling up characters you can also um, unlock the amount of items that you can uh, collect and I think going up to 50 is, is pretty good as well. So otherwise, there's a couple other things on this side. So the item exchange shop, uh, there's something I want to mention that there are some items oh not this one sorry uh, a lot of these the pink gems they are, are are limited to a monthly amount so if you are getting a ton of the yellow gems then you should just be upgrading and getting all your pink ones that are harder to farm you should be grabbing those now while you can uh, every month and just make sure same thing with the statues you know grab your monthly uh 10 statues for pink of each one and and make sure you have that done moving right along let's take a look at the mog shop so this is something that again you should be checking every single day if you are farming the events then you want to grab the things that are limited uh, per day and there's some really good ones uh, for example the gill snappers uh, are really cheap so you can grab these with very little metals each day and you can start saving up 
more Gil, which you can never have enough of. And even with this Final Fantasy 1, it's too late for him to grab these. Uh, but just look at this. You can get uh, 10 burst pots per day, and those are hard to come by, so that's really good. This also has the Gil. Uh, I wouldn't spend this on the Growth Egg or the Adamantite, uh, and definitely not the Experience Cubes. I think you're going to get enough of those from other things. Uh, if you were really desperate, then maybe, but I think that you're better off spending your, uh, your token somewhere else. The other thing that you should be looking at every day now is going to be these um, the friend medals, the arena medals, and the guild medals. So we actually have the unit shards in here now. So Rev can start getting Frederica shards every single day for relatively cheap with uh, the friend points, which is really good, and then that monthly uh, fragment of thought. With the arena, you can get the Ziza shards, which is really solid. Uh, and then with the guild one, you can get Medina, which is again, very solid. Uh, and then also the monthly rainbow fragments. But then I also buy uh, one of the medium and one of the large every single day of whatever statue my guild is working on so that I can help contribute to the statue and making it go faster for those rewards. Uh, and then I'm not spending Vizior or anything on it. So once you've done that, you can also take a look at your summons. I know this is real basic stuff. You can skip, I'll put timestamps so you can skip ahead if you're looking at the unit review stuff. But do your uh, your limited summons every single day. Uh, there's three of these per day and the shards add up, the, uh, the souls add up. Uh, it's really, really, really solid, especially if you ever get stuff like Azure Orbs and Rainbow Orbs. Like here, you've got one more Phoebe uh, unit, which is going to be really solid for a new account to get those SRs up. Uh, and then the video summons, again, I do these uh, nine times a day because you get that 200 Vizior and it, it does add up. Like if you think about whatever unit you're getting these for, so like every whatever it is, like six, seven days, you get 200 Vizior and then when a collab comes along, all of a sudden you can buy some shards for that unit that you couldn't have otherwise. Uh, the other thing is in the shops, I know we're looking, this is like right down to the basics. Uh, always checking your shops uh, and, and pay attention to what the vision card slot pops up here because it could be something uh, off feature that could be good for you. Uh, always buying these Mont shards for gold if you do not have a max jet, which is uh, true in Rev's case. So they're gold. Most, pretty much everything except for Zazan and Mont and back when we had Yishtola, uh, those are the only units that you can buy their shards with gold. Everybody else takes Vizior. So this is just too good a value not to get. So you really want to be doing that. Uh, and then otherwise, you want to be buying this um, these uh, end recipes that pop up in this slot if you don't already have them. So he's already got uh, bronze knives, so we're gonna skip that. But if you are a new player, then you're going to want to buy those end things and, uh, and rarity items or equipment until you have all of them. Uh, and then otherwise, uh, the equipment is totally your call and what you're working on. Uh, but, and same thing with the, uh, the shards uh, and the Alchris and stuff. I'm buying a lot of this stuff, but I know exactly what I'm doing. And then same time, same thing with the crafting materials. Uh, there are ones that you'll find that you think are, are pretty important to buy. I would say Blissful Hearts, pretty important to buy. Uh, you definitely want to stock up on those. Always check your shops for your daily free stuff, especially all the featured shops. Stay away from the Vizior bundles unless it's something that you really think you need. And even then, check, check with someone that's been playing the game. Uh, you don't want to waste your uh, Vizior I do like all these featured unit shops because it's a really cheap way, 5,000 gold to get your memories. So I do like those. I also do like getting the uh, the different Alchrists that do not cost Vizior here because it's a uh, gold can be farmed and sometimes it's nice to be picking these up over time so that when you get to your next unit you don't have to spend time farming these you just have bought a bunch of them so sometimes i think this is a good value although it certainly does add up if you do all of these you're spending three hundred and fifty thousand. and if you do it twice uh, you're getting closer to a mill so you have to be careful with that but definitely the the job memories i think that these are a super good value uh, and they're great to buy from these shops and then finally we have this uh, weekly shop and this one is a very interesting uh, 
place because again you can get all your all crests and your awakening souls and stuff uh, but buying the shards here is not always what you should do uh, and we'll talk more about that next so if you're just starting out and you have a group of URs that you're definitely working on or a group of units in general that you're definitely working on then I think that these shards are a good purchase uh, and if there's a unit that you're really trying to accelerate later on if you're an experienced player then again that is something that's up to you. But if you took a look at my, my account, I've got Medina at uh, maxed limit break now, and Ayaka tomorrow morning will be maxed limit breaks as well. And I stopped buying their weekly shards a while ago. Like I haven't bought them in months. So I've just been slowly doing the hard quests. My account hasn't suffered. And those that's 500 Vizior a week that I've been saving uh, because I've decided to do those um, those two characters a little bit slower so there is an advantage to not doing the weekly shop shards but when you're in a situation like Ravs where you're just starting out I think it is definitely something that you should be doing so otherwise we work our way across we go to our guild is we having a guild nope so you join a guild it's really important to join a guild uh, because you can get just so many rewards from it uh, you get daily visior from it um, there's really just it's it's one of the most fun parts of the game so definitely look for a guild if you're not in one already it's something you want to be doing same thing with arena you want to be doing your five daily arenas uh, at the end of the week you're going to get rewards and those are going to be worth it so so even if you just throw them out there although I again I think it's one of the most fun parts of the game if you embrace it so definitely something to check out uh, and then we work our way into the uh, making sure we're doing our friends uh, gifts sending them out etc it's all it's all pretty standard it seems seems really silly to spell it out but at the same time like doing this doing this methodically is going to make sure that you can never ever miss anything because when you get to a certain point you are getting from these two chests you're getting 60 vizior and from your guilds you're going to be end up getting to a point where you're getting 40 vizior so you're getting 100 vizior a day from just clicking through all of your daily little clicks here so and then you're 200 every like six days or whatever it is for your uh for your ad summons so you can add up quite a bit so it, it is important to do that stuff Okay, then other than that, there's there's other missions. There's your uh, making sure that you are doing your, um, uh, what's it called? Your experience quest, your hard quests, all that kind of stuff. It all adds up and it all, it all helps. It works towards your monthly missions. Those are all really important. Now, something that I learned recently, I, I was just blindly doing my daily. So I'm like, okay, I can do these chambers three times a day. So I will do them three times a day. So I was doing my, uh, and I would be doing them at the max, um, at the max uh, energy cost. And then I started, I talked to my friend Phil and he's like, well, like if you don't need experience cubes, because they're the worst and they are, we don't really need them. Uh, then why not just do the eight cost one three times and then once your monthly mission's done just do it once a day to get that daily mission done and use that energy for other things so you can go into the whatever events going on and spend your energy there so i started doing that and that's my call i also started skipping things like the gill chamber the ore chamber and the growth egg chamber uh, i farm the gill chamber all, all at once on the weekend uh, and i do i do do these on mondays when they're double drops um, but the ore chamber and the growth egg chamber you're going to get those from book quests from event quests you're going to get so much of those that you don't actually need to be doing them every day uh, again, that's your call, but that's something I stopped doing. The pot chamber is something that I do at the max level every single day because it is hard to get these items. Uh, so I always do three times experience, three times pot, uh, and then I will do these depending on the situation. And then otherwise, you're spending your time working on these limited quests because that's where you're gonna get all of your currencies, your equipment, your materials, etc. All right, let's get to the fun part. Let's take a look at his units. Now, Rev's done pretty well for not having played that much. He's got a ton of really nice units and I've gone ahead and organized them by level so we can take a look at what he's been playing with. So the good news here is that he has Gafgarian at max limit break, 
which was the farmable shards from the event. And then he's got each Tola at max limit break, again from the farmable shards and the buyable shards during her event. So these are two free MRs that are incredibly good value and I'm super stoked to see that he has these. He's also got a Frederica who's at LB2 and working her way to LB3, which is excellent because we saw that the friend points can get more shards of her. He also has Medina, which is one of the best mages in the game and the best farmer in the game. Uh, and he also ha has Ayaka. So Medina uh, is also working her way at all the way almost at three, which is really good. Uh, and then the Ayaka is starting out from scratch, so she needs some work. But that is right there. That is huge. He's also got Shadow Lynx, one of the best MRs, and Thancred. Uh, and me and him had a big talk about uh, Thancred because he was uh, kind of like a limited whale unit right at the beginning of the game. He's kind of confusing to new players. But he's actually got Thancred at limit break three and this is really a good spot to be at this means he's not going to be amazing for pvp or guild battles but he's going to be perfectly fine for all of your pve content and the reason that you can say that is when you get to this lb3 it allows you to uh, get your job levels to 12 and that's really important so the next uh the next lb is going to allow him to use a trust master which is really important for a pvp it's going to give him 10 more levels of stats which is really good as well and the final uh, limit break is going to allow him to get his jobs to 15 and then an another uh, 10 levels of stats again so those are important but getting to this third crystal is in my opinion the most important because when you get your jobs to level 12 and then you get your awaken to level six you have then unlocked every single job that the character has and you've unlocked every single skill that they have because you can get their jobs to the max level so you can go to their abilities and once you have level 12 jobs you will be able to go ahead and unlock all of these uh, high level skills and once they have their full kit then they you really are getting a good experience of what they can do so the fact that rev got his thank cred to three limb break is amazing i would totally be fine recommending for him to finish awakening this unit so that he can have a level 79 Thancred that will be really good in the tower uh, and really fun to play as. Uh, and not only that, the FF14 event's going to return, so he has a really good chance at getting his Thancred to Limit Break 4, and once you get to Limit Break 4, you are set. You can do all content in the game. Getting to the Limit Break 5 is that max level that obviously brings a little bit of stat advantages, but it's totally not necessary for a lot of content. Even for PvP, you can have 89 units that are super, super good because they can have trust maps masters they get some more stats uh, they're super powerful so if he can get in the next event his thank cred to that 160 mark for shards he's gonna be in a really solid spot so what I would recommend here for units is to take advantage of all the free MRs that he has. So that means that he's going to max awaken his Ishtola and his Gafgarian as soon as possible. And he has lots of rainbow fragments to do that. As soon as he does, he's going to be able to unlock some TMRs. So he'll get Vermilion, which is one of the best swords in the game, and you can equip it in a TMR slot, which allows you to equip double accessories or armor accessories. Uh, and then with the Stola, as soon as he max LBs her, he will get the Night Seeker, and then he will right away have a really solid starter staff for his Medina, for his Ishtola, for the Ayaka. Uh, so those are going to be really solid uh, choices for him. He should also be looking to max his Mont because those shards are going to be costing gold. It's going to be such a good value for him. And you'll also again get a very, very solid TMR that gives defense and spirit and HP. Uh, Rallying Cry starts to get pretty good at 
level 15 or 16 I think uh, and Mont actually happens to be one of the best tanks in the game and he's only gonna get better once we get this ability to turn off and on he's still being used in Japan like he is a very very good tank so you definitely don't want to sleep on him and his shards are are not gonna set back your Vizior spending because they cost gold. So already we're looking at a really solid team. We've got Gafgarian, Thancred, uh, Medina, Ishtola, Mont, and you can work on those all together relatively easily. Uh, and I think the next additions are right here as well. The uh, Frederica is an easy addition because you can be buying her uh, shards daily all month long with uh, the friend points. So he's got an incredible chance to actually get a really, really geared uh, set up Frederica here. Uh, and then if once he's done all of that, I, I think Shadow Lynx is again another very, very solid choice to start working on uh, because again, she's almost at LB3, which again means you can get all of her jobs, all of her skills, and you can test her out and see what her kit is like. So moving along, if he follows this course of plan here, he's gonna have casters, he'll have some range damage, he'll have a lot of slashers, which is good, uh, but he will be missing some attack types. Like we're gonna, we can use some dragon stuff with Thancred, uh, but it would be nice to get some extra um, spear users, maybe just uh, because it's good to diversify, but that's not the end of the world. You don't need to stress to get to every single attack type. He also has some other really, like if we take a look at just our URs, he's got some really great pulls. It looks like he pulled uh, a double of Whisper because he's got the 40 shards. She is a really awesome unit, but definitely needs to be uh, built by someone very experienced because she requires a lot of fine tuning to work, but she's a really cool tank. Uh, and he's also got the, the Horn Gang, he's got uh, Yerma, uh, and he's got Rams. And this one is really interesting to me because Ramza is at LB2 and he's pretty far off from LB3. But we're going to get a rerun of FFT very soon. And Rev is about to have a bunch of incoming Vizior. And I think that if he's if he's interested in Ramza, that it might be reasonable for him to try to get Ramza to LB4 before the end of the FFT2 event. And if he can, he will have, again, an amazing UR set up right there for him so that he can uh, build his team out. And I think that's gonna be really, really uh, solid for his account. So I would recommend saving his Vizior so that he can um, max that or try to get that Ramza up during the event uh, and maybe pull um, if he wants on some banners. Otherwise, taking a look at his units, uh, there's some other gems here. For example, uh, we've got Phoebe, and he has his Phoebe already at LB3. So Phoebe has a really, really solid TMR. It's actually got a pretty high amount of defense, and it's got good agility, which is really nice to have on a TMR. Plus, light attack resistance up 10 doesn't hurt. So this is a really solid uh, unit to max. It also gives you access to valuable time mage skills like quicken um, and, and then otherwise I think that there's maybe we'll talk about Zazen so you can buy his shards for gold as well uh, which makes him easy to max his TMR is nothing to write home about I honestly don't think it's that good uh, like it's not even really worth having because you're gonna get this five defense and and like it you're you'll get those somewhere else uh, I don't think that this is is worth it but you do get a very interesting kit once he's maxed because you get thief and you get steel heart and all this valuable stuff for PvE content so he is somebody to consider building although again you got to be careful with your rainbow shards so he's got a lot of solid options for the future and we'll kind of just review what the plan is. So if this were my account, I would work on my free MRs, so that's Gafgarian, Ishtola, and Mont. I would start developing my Frederica, my Ayaka, and Medina, uh, and I would max awaken my Thancred. Shadow Lynx would be a future unit to work on, and I'd have my eye on maxing Ramza when the next event came, or sorry, not maxing him, but getting him to LB4. In terms of hard quest, I would probably go two times a day for Frederica, two hard quests a day for Medina, 
two for Ayaka, uh, and then three, two to three for Shadow Links, and then a, a flex, one to two of a flex slot for somebody that that Rev wants to work on. I think that these units here are the smartest to work on and that he should be working on, but part of enjoying a gacha game is doing what you want to do and playing the characters that you want to play. So that's why I thought it'd be kind of cool if we if he does uh, two hard quests here, two here. Uh, oh, you guys can't see my mouse, sorry. Two Fred, two Medina, uh, two Shadow Lynx, and two Ayaka. That leaves him with two slots left and you could pick any you are or any character that he wants to work on and do two of their hard quests a day for two shards uh, and then slowly work on his team. Moving right along, we will be talking about uh, his Esper's and Vision card. So like, let's take, a, let's take a look at Esper's first. Okay, so right off the bat, he's doing pretty well. So he has Ifrit, Golem, Siren, uh, Ramu as his UR Esper's and they're they're all okay for levels they all need some work but he's also got behemoth iron giant uh, ochu is really solid and cactuar is really solid so he's got a full lineup of espers that are usable and he's got espers in every single domain so he's got siren for the massive slash resist he's got iron giant for more slash attack and more slash resist uh behemoth is a good on a sword user uh ifrit is good for just attack stats in general but can be also be used for a spear user cactar is an amazing um esper for a magic user golem is a very solid esper for a tank and i'm super jealous because i want golem so bad uh because you get some really cool stats you get man eater uh and you get uh some defense up which is really nice uh as well as uh, some other stuff like Earth Resistance, Evasion Raid, all that, that usual stuff, Wind Eater. I think that this is a very, very cool uh, Esper, and I hope uh, that I can pull him at some point. Otherwise, he's looking pretty good. Ramu, an amazing casting Esper. Ochu is a very well-balanced Esper. Uh, so he's set, like he's got enough espers to fill out whatever party he has uh, he could put the golem on mont uh, he could put the um either the behemoth or the iron giant or even the ifrit on Thancred. like there's lots of options he's got medina's uh esper right here in ramu uh, and then ayaka could have the cactar uh, or the siren for the slash resist or something like that uh, there's a lot of really good options here all right so we'll take a look at the vision cards next and see how he's doing in that department okay so this is looking pretty good. So again, you've got your Siren, not that great of a card uh, right now for him, uh, but it's gonna have good stats because it's a UR. And then here we go. Vow of Love is the card. It gives hate up, slash attack up, and attack up. These are incredibly valuable uh, abilities and you will put this on whoever you want to be a tank and they will start naturally with some hate uh, and it will take about three hits uh, on that tank before they lose their hate and the opponent's units will start targeting your other units. So this is a very, very valuable card and this would go right onto the Mont in this group or the Thancred. Otherwise, we've got some other really choice cards here. Ifrit is really solid uh, in terms of stats and then party ability, but you can see that the party ability cr uh, clashes with uh, the Vow of Love and it will not stack, so that kind of limits him here unless he has a no tank party, then Ifrit can be really good. He's got Trousseau, which is one of the best uh, cards for a mage, so this would be really good for his Medina. And then we've got Golem if he wants to go extra tanky. Iron Giant, one of the best vision cards in the game because you get slash attack resistance. This is incredibly important. It gives it to the entire party. There's just so much a slap there's so, so much slash attackers out there that you want to have this. And then you get slash attack up again, uh, which is really solid for most of his units. Some other really choice ones here. We have 
uh, Leonis Castle, and you can get up to 15 defense and 15 spirit. This will essentially turn anybody into a mini tank, or it will turn a tank into a uh, super power tank because they will have some really solid uh, defense and spirit stats from it. The stats the card gives are lower though, uh, and you also have to keep in mind that that tank needs to have a way to generate hate on their own because they won't. If they don't have hate, then it doesn't matter how beefy they are. The opponent opponents units will just wipe out everybody else first and then take out your tank and gang up on them but this uh, this Leonis castle is an incredibly good value uh, here's another good one secret orders uh, it gives agility up which is really nice spirit down is is too bad but then a party ability slash attack up this is often very good if you don't have other sources of this because uh, again he's using a ton of different slash attackers so this would essentially make his entire party a lot stronger and then give one unit a lot more agility moving on very good uh, card here dashing through the snowy field that's great for a, uh, a lance user and it would actually be kind of interesting with Thancred if he was subclass uh, Dragoon because it would enhance his jumps and then, uh, wow, holy limited. He's got more limited stuff. I can't, he's got Thancred, uh, Ramza, double limited cards here. Does he have any? <laughs> and he has the Ramza card as well. Holy. Just all the limited time stuff. This is really solid. Uh, this card here is quite good if you have light units. Obviously, light attack 16 is really good. And it gives you a really solid balance of stats as well. This makes it the perfect Ramza card because he often will need attack and magic. The MR Shadowbringers card. Uh, I'm actually not that familiar with it. Uh, this is pretty interesting. Um, Definitely good to have party ability, dark attack resistance up. Uh, I like that quite a bit. Definitely interesting to, to have a hold of. Um, here's a very interesting card, Cleansing the Mind, because it gives missile attack up. Uh, and you can spec against missile parties that have double gunners uh, the, to make them a little bit uh, uh, less likely to uh, just totally crush up. Uh, and then... Holy, just some really solid cards at the end here. He's got Ramu, which is going to be an incredible magic card uh, and stacks well with Trousseau because this is magic up and Trousseau is magic attack up. So if you have multiple mages, having both cards in your party is very valuable or having uh, Ramu with Medina and Ramza is very valuable if Ramza is spec to be a spell blade. Uh, this this uh, card here is one of the best cards if not the best card in the game because it gives your entire party agility up um, obviously it's not going to go that high at this stage because he's only got the one star but again the event's coming back so if he pulled he could go up to four star here or four percent here uh, when the event comes if he pulls one or if he uh, gets some shards of it then he could probably upgrade a bit and that would be very valuable uh, and then slash attack up is obviously fine on a card as well And then we've got Kalem is a situ situational but good UR card. Uh, and then this one is very, very so solid. So Path to Revenge, you can get uh, a bunch of defense on a unit, but then you can also get that slash attack up for the party. And we've already talked about how valuable that is. This is a solid card to have a hold of. And then a couple of good cards here. Ochu gives you some Pierce attack. Uh, and then um, the Snow White Guard is a very interesting card for a lot of units because it gives you a bunch of resistances but puts your max, max HP down. So something very interesting to have a hold of. So all in all, he's, he's doing super well for vision cards. Like this is... This is awesome. Um, some other... Let's see, just real quick... Uh, if you wanted to go evade, this luck up card would be very solid as well. So uh, the last thing I want to take a look at is the equipment on this account. Okay, so uh, he's got a bunch of random stuff made, which is fine. Um, but he's got the Excalibur, <laughs> Excalibur at level 30. This is huge. 
Uh, this sword is absolutely amazing. It can be used by uh, an attacker, a magic user, and it can also be uh, used by anybody that wants accuracy because you get 24 here, and that's going to be a really, really big deal um, in a lot of matchups. They stopped giving out the Excalibur uh, to new players, so it's incredible that he has that. Uh, and then otherwise, here's where he needs to uh, change a few things. Yeah, so we want to go uh, Ascending Rarity up. So look at all the end gear. So he only has uh, very few pieces of end uh, gear, but this is super important gear to have. So for example, with this staff, the nice thing about the, the end gear, there's no awakening, there's none of that. It's, it has a max level of 30, and if you max this piece of equipment, it will max it, all of its stats. So if I went enhance here, I would get the 5 accuracy, the 2 crit, the 47 magic, the 6 attack, and the 51 HP guaranteed no matter what. If I was going to max a regular piece of equipment, for example this longsword, I can get more stats on here, but it's none of it's guaranteed. So it says I could get 81 magic, but it's RNG if I actually get that 81 magic or not. Not only that, every 10 levels I have to awaken it uh, by using sword books and uh, ingredients. And then I can also uh, craft versions of this weapon to make it a plus one longsword, a plus two, a plus three, a plus four, a plus five. So all of that equates to very, very time consuming and uh, it takes a lot of resources, a lot of effort, uh, and it's something that you should do eventually. Uh, I would recommend going to like plus two or plus three, um, unless you're it's an event item, then it's a lot easier to plus five. Uh, but in the meantime, use the end equipment. Buy up all the end equipment, all the armor, all the accessories, uh, get one of each weapon, maybe two staffs because he has Medina and he has Ayaka. Uh, maybe get a couple pieces of the armor, but buy one of every single end weapon. And if you have a, a unit that uses that weapon, get it to level 30 right away and allow them or get them those stats because it does make a little bit of a difference. It is something that is, is valuable to have. Uh, and he is going to get the Ishtola TMR staff soon so that's really solid as well. Whew, that is a marathon of information so if you stuck around thus far thank you I hope this is useful uh, if you're a new player and if you're an experienced player then you got to tell me uh, what you think about this account and, and what can be done. So the last thing we're going to do is take a look at kind of a, a formation that he could use uh, and, and some of the cards and espers and stuff and we'll just put that together. So I think that it'd be fun for him to be able to use uh, Thancred because he, he, I know that he likes Thancred. But in the meantime, I think that this will likely become some like his his most powerful party here i think um he's got a good chance to get medina uh shards as well so i think that this final slot could be medina it could be mont once he gets mont leveled up but this would be a very interesting uh party right here he's got a good uh shot at, at just kind of like gearing everybody up uh and in terms of espers, we could uh, we could do something like this. Uh, it depends on, on how you want to build this out, uh, but I think that we could give. And for the for Frederica, I'm just gonna give her Ifrit, give her lots of attack, uh, just get her power up. Uh, and then we've got. Golem open for Mont so he can build an affinity there But otherwise we've got double mages which is nice because we can build up the uh, the magic in this party Which would be very very nice if he had Ramza Spellblade But otherwise this would be something that he could uh, confidently build up and uh, Let's see what should what card could be put on Gafgarian. I think that Gafgarian uh, would likely well, well we'll give him this, and we're going to give Thancred. Uh, we're going to give him Vow of Love for now. Uh, that gives everybody attack up, and then we also want uh, maybe some slash attack up for everybody. Uh, 
or slash, depending on what you're doing, slash resistance. So this would be a great slot for the secret orders, uh, just because it gives Frederica some uh, agility so she can go multiple times. Uh, it, she doesn't need the spirit as much because she's in the back line. Uh, and then it gives these two guys here some slash attack. If she does a party with Mont, then there's more slash attack to go around. Uh, and then otherwise, he's gonna build out all of these equipment slots with his end gear for now. So he doesn't have much end gear uh, at this point, but he would be able to fill out all these slots uh, and have uh, kind of a solid team here. And then when necessary, uh, he could put Mont in here if he needed. But this, this seems like a really solid lineup for me. Okay, so that's gonna be it. Uh, and don't forget to get in the comments because I want to, uh, I want to hear what you think. If there's some a different direction you'd go with this uh, account, uh, and uh, kind of any advice that you have for Rev in general. And Rev, if you're watching, which I know you are, uh, <laughs> thank you so much for donating your account for this purpose. Uh, one final thing that we should talk about is his Vizior here. So I think that he should be spending. Uh, in the weekly shops to buy Frederica shards, Ayaka shards, Medina shards, um, and then otherwise save the Vizior for the FFT2 event, buy Ramza shards, buy uh, the vision card shards if they're available, uh, and then I wouldn't necessarily pull for a new FFT character because it's so hard to, to max a limited character, but if you wanted to do some fun pulls, then uh, I mean, it's it's up to you. It's, it's really your call how you want to enjoy the game, but I think that would be a good way to go. All right, so that's it. Uh, we'll see you all in the comments. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Thank you so much for watching this video. You can show your support with a like and subscribe and by checking out my Patreon at patreon.com slash Gaming. Until next time, Keep it real, Mercedes.